Thank you, Bruce. Mr. President, fellow SNAMI members, ladies and gentlemen, I need to di digress just a little bit from my uh, prepared speech. Uh, <clears throat> yes, Bruce and I disagree on, uh, on, 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 on the baseball uh, teams. Uh, and as a typical <clears throat> Red Sox fan, I have to say, wait till next year. I've been saying that for way too many years, but there was one thing that I, I had the, the, the honor of doing, or the privilege of doing, or the fun in doing, and that was we were the sponsors of this banquet tonight. And I'd like you to all open your menu, and I'd like you to look at the dessert. Bruce, the Boston cream pie was for you. <laughs> I am deeply honored and, and humbled to receive this award, and, and I, I know Bruce talked about some of my career. It hasn't all been with ABS, most of it has. I was interested to, that I also had some time at Newport News uh, or working at that great shipyard. It, I also am very happy tonight to, to see my friend Joe Fisher getting an award. He probably doesn't remember this, but in 1970, three or four, I was a surveyor on the Great Lakes and actually was the surveyor on the first thousand footers that we built up there. So I'm very, very honored to, to share this with you tonight. I'm very humbled as, as much as I have tried to serve this industry over, over the entire course of my professional life, my contribution is really nothing uh, compared to that of Admiral Land, the original recipient of this medal and the man for which it is named. Now, I know I'm probably in the same boat as many of you here tonight. Uh, I've attended many of these banquets over the years, and, and I uh, applauded the recipients of the, the Vice Admiral Land Medal without giving much thought to really who Jerry Land was. Um, I mean, all I can say is uh, I wish I had the opportunity to meet him. Bruce has given you some of the background, uh, but I, I went into it a little bit in more detail. Uh, he graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy in, in 1902. He devoted the next 44 years of his life, first to the Navy and then to the Merchant Service. That latter period began in 1937 when President Roosevelt, as Bruce said, appointed him to the U.S. Maritime Commission. Earlier the following year, he succeeded Joe Kennedy, a name well known around here, as chairman of the commission, a position he held until leaving government services in 1946. During the period of the Second World War, he was also responsible for the establishment and the administration of the War Shipping Administration. I need only mention two elements of his efforts in those positions to more than justify his, his place in the U.S. maritime history. It was under his leadership as the Maritime Commission that the nation embarked upon the massive ships construction program that Bruce talked about with the program of C-1, C-2, and C-3 cargo vessels, basically the Liberty Ship Program and also the T-2 tanker program. And it was under his leadership at the War Shipping Administration that the need for the enhanced educational opportunities for seafarers was recognized, resulting in the purchase of the Walter Chrysler Estate on Long Island and the establishment in 1943 of the Kings Point Academy. At the end of the war, he was also responsible for encouraging President Truman to adopt the Ship Sales Act, which not only saw the transference of, of the surplus fleet of liberties and victories and T2s to the U.S. shipping companies, but also led to the reestablishment of the Greek Merchant Marine, providing the siege from which has grown the vast Greek-controlled shipping fleets of today. Admiral Land was one of the, the shipping greats and this, received this, this medal tonight is more than I could ever have imagined 
when I first walked through the gates of Bay Maritime Academy from a potato farm in northern Maine all those years ago. It is also an honor for me to have my name join the list of recipients that include two former chairmen of ABS, and I refer to Walter Green in 1955 and Andrew Nielsen, who was the recipient in 1970, which incidentally was the same year that I joined ABS. I'm also honored, and also here tonight, is a past, or immediate past president of ABS, Bob Kremick, and I'm very happy that he is here. And there are so many other Ill Ill members of our global community who have been recognized over the years, and I just go through so many of them, J.J. Henry, Bill O'Neill, Admiral Blanket, Tom Crowley, Lester Rosenblatt, and of course, Bruce, who I really appreciate introducing me here tonight. Among uh, uh, many others, including, including a lot of distinguished ABS alumni. Thinking back to Admiral Land, I find I singled out two of his achievements the huge increase in the U.S. fleet under his watch and his dedication to supporting maritime education. If I look for any parallels, unworthy by comparison, but parallels nonetheless, I take great satisfaction that in recent years, the ABS class fleet has grown to an unprecedented level, currently standing at more than 155 million gross tons with Greek-owned tonnage on a par with U.S. control tonnage. And secondly, that ABS has undertaken a multi-million dollar program of investments in maritime education, principally here in the U.S. at the various maritime colleges and in support of naval architecture, ocean engineering programs at the universities of Michigan, MIT, Webb, and Berkeley but also in support of maritime programs and universities and colleges around the world. With these examples, I believe we are adhering to the example that Admiral Land set some 70 years ago. So, I accept the medal that bears his name and likeness tonight with a great deal of humility. On behalf, on behalf of all the dedicated people at ABS, who continue to further the principles of growth and professionalism within our organization and in support of this industry in this country and around the world. Thank you all very, very much.